Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Hayashi. Uh, this is going to be an emotional one for me. I'm about to shoot my own reaction video watching myself for the first time on the Penn & Teller Fool Us show. Uh, it is Tuesday, July the 10th in the evening. I'm currently in Busan, South Korea at the World Championships of Magic uh, Magicians Convention. And um, about 12 hours ago, uh, North California, North American time, uh, this this segment aired. And since then, <laughs> uh, just 12 hours later, it's up to 18,000 uh, views with, uh, what is it, like 500 likes and, and 150 comments um, with all of my old school friends from... <laughs> from uh, uh, Canada uh, congratulating me on this thing. So this video is 10 minutes long. I'm, I'm currently in my hotel where I have to uh, uh, do some more rehearsal. I, I'm competing in the World Championships the day after tomorrow on Thursday the 12th. But I'm gonna, this is worth it. I'm going to take the break and watch this thing now uh, for the first time. The, I'm in front of a mirror. Uh, there's my laptop and I'm just going to watch my watch myself. This is the quickest way I can actually get a reaction video of me watching me oh no vanished i'm gonna press play there it is magic in six languages let's hope he chooses the right one to fool pen and teller here we go i'm ryan hayashi when i was a kid i had two heroes bruce lee and david copperfield they inspired me i wanted to do what they did the martial arts and magic are very similar because they both come from older traditions that have been passed down over centuries you have to master certain movements to the point that there's precision, but at the same time having the flow and making it your own. The first time I nice. actually combined magic and the martial arts was the samurai madman of magic. I cut up vegetables around people's heads, blindfolded, without killing them. That's my buddy Alexei. I'm shedding my samurai character and stripping down my performance to magic in its purest form. Oh, I transformed like an X-Man. coins that fit in my pocket. That's Japanese for time to get my freak on. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Motion sensors. When I was a kid in the 1980s, I saw Penn and Teller on television performing an act with just a pencil and a cigarette. This act fooled me and taught me the basics of magic. So, Penn, Teller, I now present to you what you inspired in me 30 years ago. I'm going to hurt your brain. Using these four cards and four coins in an original routine I call the ultimate matrix. In just a moment, these coins are going to magically appear and disappear, changing the positions around the square, traveling from their corners to all come together, gathering here in this corner and landing underneath this square. And if Ooh, I can create overhead camera that those coins move without me using my hands, well then. I might just fool you. All right, good first reaction. Crowd it's shot. Magic in its purest and simplest form. Four coins in a square. Notice a little white uh, Watch closely lapel pin on my tie. Very fast. Hi, Joel. And I just did it. Was that too fast for you? Not a problem. Everybody, do not blink your eyes. And uh, I'll just do it one more time. Oh, the camera works great. The editing looks really good. The little white pin on my black tie is the 4F pin. So shout out, shout out to my 4F magician buddies. Everybody, watch this coin travel. Watch the next one go from the side. And the people from this side may actually see the last one. Disappear from my fingertips. Watch this last coin vanish, creating a tremor in the force as a hundred thousand children watching this suddenly decide that magic is cool. Is cool. <laughs> I love that line. I wrote it myself. The viewers at home may Google me now. This time visibly so you actually see each 
coin junk. This is the part that hits people hard. All I have to do is make the mysterious Asian sounds. There's the first one. I'll do it again. And that makes three. The next one, no hands, just because I can. Vanishes here. Reappears in the corner, and I'm in peace mode. And I'm in beast mode. I didn't actually write that in the script, I just said it because I was in beast mode. Here comes the epic monologue. I've been performing magic since I was eight years old, and it took me 12 years to create this act. So for me, this is not just a magic trick. This is something far deeper and a thousand times more savage. A work of terrifying beauty that has been growing all my life like an uncontrollable weed in the garden of my mind. I have crossed oceans of time and vast empires to be here today, so I take the honor of performing here very seriously. The amount of mental energy I've invested in creating this act could demolish planets. This is the most epic monologue in the history of magic, for I am here to inflict psychological damage, and that means we're not done yet. Damn, I was on point that day. This looks great. Announcing the devastation I can generate using two hands. Let's take this to the next level. I'll do it again with just one hand. You can ask any magician around the world about performing an illusion this clean using just one hand, and they will tell you that it is physically impossible. And it looks like this. <laughs> Watch the next one. I get nowhere near those coins with my hand. And still vanishes from here, reappears in the corner. And I am the Jackie Chan of magic. The next one will invisibly fly from here to there, forming a perfect square. It happens on the count of three. Get ready for this. I've seen it all. Nosebleed, seizures. There's one. There's two. That's three. And as promised, I can now actually show you a perfect square formed by one, two, three, and four coins with just one hand. Oh, there's that epic you crowd reaction. How epic this feels. My heart is pounding, and I can feel the adrenaline pulsing through my veins. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for sharing this moment with me, because just being here was a dream come true. So for everyone watching, if you have a dream, never give up believing in your dream, living your dream, and doing something every day to make that dream happen. But remember one thing, no matter who you are, no matter how hard you work, or how good you think you are at what you do, there will always be an Asian who takes it to the next level. Yeah! Oh, that right there was one of the most epic moments of my life. Seriously. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, that wasn't scripted. That just came from the heart. Wow. <laughs> Look at my freak out. Oh, is that the end of the video? Oh, okay, okay. All right. That's the end of the video. Um, what came after that? They just handed me the, um, just handed me the, the, the fool ass trophy, but that was, uh, <laughs> that, that, that was, um, a very emotional moment for me. You know, uh, when I was a kid, uh, those two legendary magicians were, were seriously heroes of mine and uh, even just performing in front of them, that was a really uh, big thing for me. So uh, when I walked off that stage, I was nearly in tears. Okay, wow. Uh, that, that, I'm, I'm going to watch it like not through the mirror, but the right way around this time and just enjoy it. But uh, that um, I'm normally pretty good. As as a as a performer, if I may say that, but but the it all just came together, you know, the the clarity, the uh, and not not just through editing, like there's no magic there. That's 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 what happened on that stage when I was there. That's the energy that came out of that theater crowd, and uh, it's it's like every muscle fiber, every neuron was just firing in in correct sequence that day, and it all just came together. And if I could be remembered just by 10 minutes of my life, you know, that, that would be it right there. So, um, I'm kind of emotional watching it again <laughs> and, uh, wow. Um, I, I just talked to my mom and dad on the phone. They watched it on TV back home and, 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 uh, they're freaking out. They loved it. So, uh, this, this is, uh, this, this was seriously one of the highlights of my life. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a look at this reaction video, but I got a feeling that, uh, I didn't talk a lot watching it because I, I just wanted to watch the segment, but it, it turned out great. I mean, that's a beautiful piece of television. Um, um, before going on, you know, writing the script for this with the epic monologue, to be honest, I was a little bit nervous. Um, this was my first time doing American television. I don't normally perform in English, and it was my first time not performing with a samurai sword in traditional uh, Japanese clothing like this. This is my first time walking out in normal western clothing and just being the funny guy that's the big thing I'd, I'd never just been the funny guy before and i i wasn't playing a role i was just being me but you know a better amplified scripted me and uh in europe this act actually um i don't know if it would go over well it probably wouldn't even be seen as funny just a tick too arrogant and too over the top in your face but uh apparently uh it resonated well with american audiences and uh I think that segment translated really, really well in television. Uh, I walked on, on onto this performance um, with 11 years of television experience, 36 television shows, uh, just not in the U.S., um, in, in Europe. So I, I brought a lot of experience onto this show, you know, doing over a decade of work in, in over 30 primetime national TV shows. That doesn't happen by accident, and you can't do that much hands-on work and not learn something. And I think it all showed up in this one epic segment, Penn and Teller Fool Us. So uh, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> 